crystals of gold from my 1786 copy a manual of chemistry translated from the french of m Baum. Second edition corrected. Under metallic substances. I'm starting on page 122. The imperfect metals are copper, tin, lead, and iron. There, these, these are ductile as well as the perfect metals, but they are destroyed and converted into earth by the action of fire, whence their title. The semi-metals are regulus of antimony, bismuth, zinc, regulus of cobalt, and Regulus of Arsenic. The name of semi-metal is given them because they are void of ductility, are volatilized by fire, and undergo calcination like the imperfect metals. There is another metallic substance which chemists usually range among the semi-metals. This is mercury or quicksilver. We think, however, with Mr. McQuirr, that it is better to make a separate class of it. The imperfect metals and semi-metals have one property in common, which is to emit an odor when rubbed or when only warmed by the hand. This odor is different in different metals and easily distinguished. The perfect metals and mercury alone yield none. On gold, gold is a perfect metal, moderately hard, of a bright yellow color, very little elastic, and sonorous. It is the heaviest of all the metallic bodies and consequently of all the bodies in nature. Gold acquires a sensible rigidity beneath the hammer and is softened by kneeling. I think they mean annealing its color is variable. It is sometimes met with very high colored and sometimes very pale. Walerius says that it is even found almost white. Gold weighed by the hydrostatical balance loses between a 19th and 20th of its weight in water. It is the most ductile of all metals and likewise the most tenacious. A gold wire of a tenth of an inch in diameter is capable of supporting a weight of 500 pounds without breaking. Air and water have no action upon it. Fusion of gold. Gold exposed to the fire reddens long before it melts. When just going to melt, it takes a tea green, sea green hue, but undergoes no alteration or diminution of weight. Gold, which has been well melted and suffered to cool slowly, has its surface figured in very large, brilliant facets of a foliated form. Pure acids, sulfur, 
and fixed alkali have no action upon gold, either by the dry or the moist way. Solution of gold in aqua regia. A mixture of the nitrous and marine acids forms a compound called aqua regia, which dissolves gold by the assistance of heat. This solution is of a gold color and transparent. Crystals of gold. This solution set to evaporate and crystallize furnishes saline crystals called crystals of gold. Animal matter stained by solution of gold. Solution of gold applied to bone and ivory leaves a reddish purple stain which does not wear out. Skins are also stained in the same manner. Gold precipitated from its solution by fixed alkali. If fixed alkali be added to a solution of gold, the metal is precipitated in form of a very deep yellow powder. Gold in rags. Clean old linen rags are plunged into a solution of gold, and when well soaked in it, are dried and burned in a crucible. There remains a coal of linen mixed with gold in a very divided state. This powder is used, applied on the end of a file cork, to gild delicate work, which cannot be gilt in another matter. Gold dissolved in liver of sulfur. Liver of sulfur, that is, a combination of sulfur and fixed alkali, attacks gold, dissolves it, and renders it soluble in water. Gold precipitated from a solution made by liver of sulfur. If an acid be poured on a solution of gold made by liver of sulfur, the gold and sulfur fall down at the same time. On calcining this precipitate, the sulfur burns and is dissipated, and the gold is recovered in its original form. On platina. Platina is a perfect metal which comes to us in small grains resembling iron filings. This metallic substance is without smell and taste, of a whitish gray color approaching to that of polished steel and of a specific gravity equal to that of gold. Platina exposed to the fire. Platina exposed to the greatest heat we can produce in our furnaces undergoes no alteration or dis diminution of weight and does not melt. It is not, however, un, un, it's hard to explain some of these words because the spelling in those times, this word is spelled U-N-F-U-F-I-B-L-E, unsuscible, I think it means unsustainable. When exposed to the focus of a good burning glass, it enters into real fusion, the portion melted is found to have a good deal of ductility and a de degree of specific gravity similar to that of gold. Solution of platina, sulfur and fixed alkali taken separately do not act upon platina. No more do the mineral acids singly. Like gold, it is soluble only by a liver of sulfur and a mixture of the nitrous and marine acids assisted by heat. Precipitate of platina. If fixed alkali be added to a solution of platina in aqua regia, a precipitate of an orange yellow color is thrown down. When no more alkali is used than is necessary for the precipitation, the precipitate is of a pale yellow. Means of discovering when gold is alloyed with platina. This to me says the old technique of multiplication of gold.
Platina has frequently been used to augment the bulk of gold. This deceit was difficult to detect on account of the similarity of properties in these two metals. But chemists in their operations on platina soon discovered a method of detecting the smallest proportion of it mixed with gold. On dissolving the suspected gold in aqua regia and adding a little solution of sal ammoniac, a very fine yellow precipitate immediately falls down if it really contains platina, but no precipitation ensues if it was pure. It may, in like manner, be discovered when platina is alloyed with gold. For this purpose, the platina must be dissolved in aqua regia and some solution of martial vitriol added to it. If the platina was mixed with gold, a brown precipitate is immediately thrown down. But no precipitation takes place if it was pure. And this is a, a different section on silver. Interesting. This is my 1786 copy. A manual of chemistry or a brief account of the operations of chemistry and their products. Translated from the French of M. Bohm. Demonstrator in chemistry at Paris and member of the Royal Academy of Sciences. The second edition corrected with additions. There is a modern reprint on Amazon. I will throw a link in the description below this video. I hope to earn your subscription today. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.